The Will You Grow Show goes live Sundays 9 to 10 a.m. Eastern. To receive notifications, click the subscribe button beneath this video or visit YouTube's Will You Grow channel to see more shows and videos. And now, here's Will You founder Angelique Meadow with this week's Will You Grow Show. Welcome to the Will You Grow Show. How are you? I'm Angelique, founder of Will You and WillYouGrow.com, an inspirational multimedia company that provides education and mentoring to nurture empowerment and joy. Our weekly grow show begins by tackling touchy subjects that'll tickle your tempestuous thoughts, fan your eternal flame, and salve your soul with hope. Halfway through, we'll take a 60-second look at what clients have to say, and then we'll go hands-on to talk fun tips and tools for you to begin implementing today's lesson in your life. Here in the studio with me today are our audio aficionado, Ben, and our video Santa, Neil. They do the vital work of making this show happen while sharing their colorful commentary. Yeah. And wearing shorts. Oh, yes, <laughs> springtime is here. <laughs> and today's show topic is truth or snare? Do you know your truth? If so, do you honor it or ignore it? Speak it or stuff it? And how might this affect you and your family? This episode is sponsored by Life and Nature, who keep our hearts beating and our world turning. And by the Carrie Campbell Foundation, which supports creative video content that increases love among all people. We say thank you to the Carrie Campbell Foundation and each and every one of you who gives gifts to make our work possible. And now on to today's topic, Truth or Snare, Part 1. Over the past weeks, we've discussed the painful effects of untruths in many forms. We've discussed fairy tale logic that results from denial. We've discussed pretend love that results from being what we're not. And we've discussed abandoning ourselves as a result of believing that's what we're supposed to do when we're in love. If you missed any of these episodes, I'll let you know at the end of the show where you can go find them. The detrimental results of the untruths we discussed include low self-esteem, unfulfilling relationships, heartbreak, family problems, and more. So it would seem that truth-telling would be a better, healthier solution. So why does it seem so difficult to tell the truth? This is the first of a three-part series exploring why it can seem so difficult and why it's vital that we strive for truthfulness anyway. So let's talk about the concept of truth for a moment. It's been my experience that although tall tales may be perceived as more interesting, our mundane truth is actually far more intriguing, coveted, rare, and at least equally as interesting as untruth. That's why we see truth in reading others' diaries why phone conversations are tapped and tracked, and why private investigators exist. Our universal desire for truth is eternal, because truth is what creates a solid foundation within our reality. When we know what's true, we may make our choices accordingly. It's not easy to know, speak, and be our truth. To find and know our truth requires curiosity and courage. It also requires keen awareness. That is the crystal clear ability to see and know ourself and the world as it is without putting our desires and fears onto the situation or seeing them through those lenses. When we cannot see or experience life as it is beyond our desires and fears, we are ensnared in the world of the ego, a trap of beliefs in our mind. Let's refer to a little story to help solidify truth. Once upon a time in Alice in Wonderland, the clocks don't work, but they have amazing rabbits who can't tell time and are always running late. I'm late, I'm late for a very important date. 
<laughs> Visitors could always come for tea at the long, crumpet-filled table bookended by the Cheshire Cat and the Mad Hatter because it was always tea time. Since the clocks were broken, no one knew true time. And when we don't know what's true, how can we act accordingly? To tell the truth, we must know the truth, while also accounting for uncertainty. If we are asked, what time is it? Then we could look at our watch and respond, mm, it's 4.30 p.m. And we probably answered as best as we know. However, this may or may not be true. Let's say our watch stopped and it's actually 5.30 p.m. We can only tell the truth that we know. So to help us more closely tell the truth, we might ask ourselves, is there a more truthful way for me to respond? In this instance, a closer truth might sound something like this. My watch reads 4.30 p.m. Another fine way to ferret out truth is presented by Byron Katie in her book, I Need Your Love. She suggests that we regularly ask ourselves internally about our beliefs, asking ourselves, is this really true? The answers we discover may reveal our truth. To tell the truth, we must know who we are. My loving friend Natasha, for example, regularly asks me if I would like to join her in the activities that she enjoys. I know this means a lot to her, as she enjoys my company and I enjoy hers. However, some of the activities that she enjoys are mind-numbing to me. <laughs> I know this about myself. The truth of me is, that if I were to spend an entire day doing something I dislike, even if it's with someone I enjoy, I would end the day feeling drained and less joyful. With this in mind, I seek to share time with Natasha doing activities that we both enjoy. This choice is a win-win, since both of us can stay true to ourselves while enjoying some activities solo or with someone else, while also enjoying what we enjoy together. Neither of us feel obligated to spend time together doing what the other person wants. Sounds freeing, doesn't it? <laughs> to live in my truth as I consider an invitation, I ask myself, is this activity truly best for me? In the instance with Natasha, the answer was no. So I shared my truth with her by replying, Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm not up for shopping, but I miss you. Let me know if you're up for hiking or biking sometime soon. To tell the truth, we must know what we want. I want more than anything to be able to give and receive goodness at 100% and share a message of empowerment. Since I am not willing to compromise this, I can avoid making choices that oppose my truth. For example, I was offered a job that would take my time, energy, and focus away from sharing my message of empowerment. Although it was a fine offer, it did not match my truth. As interesting as the offer was, it was not in alignment with what I want. Anything that does not bring me closer to what I want actually takes me away from what I want. So in that instance, I said, thank you so very much for the beautiful offer. I truly appreciate the honor of this opportunity. However, I need to focus on my current business. I hope that our paths will cross in the future and opportunities will present themselves to work together in the area of empowerment. There is a relationship between truth and willpower. When we know who we are and what we want, we allow ourselves the opportunity to courageously stand for that. When we make choices, even seemingly small ones like the ones I mentioned previously, when we make those choices in our truth, 
we grow and build willpower. Also, truth and justice may be related. Maybe our culture's apparent lack of truthfulness is rooted not as much in the nature of humans being, but rather in that we can't tell our truth because we do not know it. As Gandhi said, a truth isn't any less true for lack of agreement with it. Yet we fight, we argue about seemingly small things, simply for the sake of winning without meaning. If instead we would learn our truth and manage ourselves, we could create lives with meaning. When we know who we are and what we want, we can dedicate ourselves to protecting and to serving our truth. And now we'll take a break to see what clients have to say. When we come back, we'll talk tips and tools to heal our body mind and elements from nature to help us live our truth. The Will You Grow Show will now take 60 seconds to check in with you. If you're wondering how to apply a Grow Show topic to your life, here's what clients say about mentoring with Angelique. She's been really instrumental in um, my being able to view my life in a more positive light. Angelique is sort of this incredible uh, role model. Um, one of the very most generous, loving people um, I think we've ever met. I'm so happy she's, you know, alive and on the planet and happens to live in my city and I happen to meet her. She doesn't mince words, she's going to say what she feels and for me it's just very special to have somebody around that is that honest. If you're asking who she is to me, she is that person that brings willpower. She's that person that's that's always positive in your life. This is your girl. Um, <laughs> Self-care is not selfish. If you really want to dig deep and stop living on the surface, then schedule a conversation with Angelique. And now, back to the Will You Grow show with Will You founder, Angelique Meadow. Welcome back, everybody. Before we get into our metaphysical tool time, I'd love to touch base with the crew here and see what they think about this topic of truth or snare. Um, so I had a question, I guess, being in touch with your truth and knowing your truth doesn't necessarily mean that you're completely happy with your truth, right? Well, let's turn it back on ourselves okay. and say, have we ever had to do something that we knew was best for us, but it wasn't fun? Yes. Going to the doctor. <laughs> Going to the doctor or the dentist well, the or dentist. changing our diet or deciding to exercise if yes. we haven't in a long time or having to get a to choose a divorce because it's best for us, even though right. we might hate that we have to do it the whole time. Okay. So there's courage required in being our truth for listening to it, for acknowledging it right. and then walking it. And it takes time to build up extra willpower. So every choice we make. It starts to build our willpower and make us feel like, okay, well, I did this. I can maybe do something else, too. Okay. What do you think about that? When Angelique was talking about that, it just made me think of, you know, there, there might be a short-term, easy decision that you can make that is not what you really want to be doing or your dream or what you really authentically care about and... In that case, it's better to take your authentic path, the suffering path, and let that work take you wherever it will, because at least, even if it all burns, at least it was a mortgage instead of a rental, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good analogy. Yeah. yeah. That's an adult <laughs> analogy right there. <laughs> mortgage. That's fascinating, Ben. I like that. <laughs> I like nice. that thought process. Seeking happiness is like trying to chase a butterfly. You know, we can't always make the choices based on happy. Mm -hmm. The best choices for us, the truthful choices for us, the authentic choices for us may be harder in the beginning, but they have a long-term reward. And we get this opportunity now to start to take pleasure in the ability to say yes and no 
in our truth, right. which is different from taking pleasure from getting that thing, doing the job, going on the date, all those, that's all physical stuff. Mm -hmm. But that inner pleasure of the knowing that we did what was true for us is something no one ever can, can take from us. It's there at night when we go to bed and put our head on the pillow and can get good rest. Mm -hmm. It's there in the morning when we wake up and we think about what we're doing that day. It's uniquely us. It is. It makes our shoulders go back. It makes us stand <laughs> taller. It makes our eyes brighter. And it makes us able to look in other people's eyes and not be afraid. I wish it could make us grow more hair. But no one knows the secret to that. <laughs> but maybe here oh. are sponsors. sponsors. Yeah. <laughs> Good discussion. We love you just the way you are. <laughs> and now it's metaphysical tool time. We'll begin with an energetic element of the body that can help us actualize our truth. Then we'll reflect on a couple of earth elements that can support our truthfulness. And finally, we'll spotlight a special flying friend who can show us how to express our truth clearly and beautifully. Here we go. <laughs> Have you heard of the solar plexus chakra? It's an energetic area of our body located behind the soft cartilage at the bottom of the breastbone and represented by a golden yellow color, kind of like this in the rose. If truthfulness is difficult for us, it's likely that our solar plexus chakra is out of balance. As it shows in this great book titled Crystal Chakra Healing by Philip Permut, please forgive me, Philip, if I've mispronounced your name. If our solar plexus chakra is blocked, energy moves very slowly or doesn't flow at all. It leads to a feeling of being drained and a loss of personal power and self-respect. Typical symptoms are a lack of concentration failing memory, falling asleep during the day, insomnia, digestive disorders, eating disorders, and stress-related skin conditions. It's the solar plexus chakra that puts our beliefs, ideas, thoughts, and creative inspiration into practice. It is also where we act on the concepts of trust and honor. When it's out of balance, Either we have ideas and thoughts that just go around in our head without doing anything with them, or we're running around like a headless chicken without direction. Anybody relate to this? <laughs> a balanced solar plexus chakra gives our actions purpose. A healthy solar plexus chakra encourages the development of leadership skills, such as bravery, confidence, self-esteem, inner strength, logic, and the abilities to lead by example and take responsibility for our own decisions and emotional control of ourself. When this chakra is balanced, it also helps us to see the truth within other people. If you sense that your solar plexus chakra could benefit from healing, you may research any number of healing modalities and utilize some of the healing crystals shown in this book. Today, I'm wearing two healing stones. This is the citrine. Neil, would you like to tell us a little bit about the citrine? The citrine is known for its ability to increase awareness, self-esteem, and balance. Awesome, thank you very much. Yes. And these antique mother of pearl pieces were lovingly passed on to me by the wise and wonderful Ms. Heather, sending thanks and love to her. Neil, would you mind telling us a little bit about the Mother of Pearl? But of course. Mother of Pearl shell for jewelry refers to the nacre that coats the inside layer of the mollusk shell, which is used to form pearls. Hence, it's the Mother of Pearl. Number two, Mother of Pearl shell turns on the solar plexus chakra as well as the throat chakra. Natural mother of pearl shell has tremendous spiritual value for those whose high goals and attitudes keep them feeling stressed. Mother of pearl shell is commonly believed to attract prosperity, 
and is often used in mystical work and lore to heighten intuition, psychic sensitivity, and imagination. It is believed that Mother of Pearl Shell offers soothing motherly protection, hence its name, from negative energy and love. We will need these qualities more as we learn, speak, and live our truth. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Neil. And finally, our spirit animal for today is the chickadee. Ben, share with us a bit about the chickadee. Many people consider the chickadee a symbol of good luck. These birds are closely associated with such attributes as happiness, positivity, and good fortunes. Native American tribes believe that this bird was a messenger from the spirit world and ancestors. They brought messages of truth and knowledge. One of the smaller birds in the animal kingdom, the chickadee does not let their size limit their ability to hop, dive, fly, and sing fearlessly and fervently, sharing the song of their experience with the world. Oh, wonderful. Just as we all can do as we get to know our truth and speak it for the world. What say ye? Do you know your truth? Can you speak your truth? How do you stay truthful to you? Please share your thoughts and feelings so we may grow together. Thank you so much for watching. It means the world to us. If you liked today's show, we'd be honored if you'd hit that subscribe button to receive weekly updates, hit the like button to let us know that you like what we're doing, and hit the share button to share this message with people you care about. If you feel inspired to give a financial gift to help us keep this show coming, look for the green Will You Circle below this video. Click it to go to our YouTube channel, then click the donate button on the upper right side of your screen. All amounts are so appreciated. To see more videos, they're also available by clicking that little green Will You button below this video. And if you'd like to talk about mentoring with me, schedule your conversation at willyougrow.com. And for now, we bid you adieu. Take excellent care of your very fine self, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Always with love, from Angelique. I'm late. I'm late for a very important thing. <laughs> yes, you can. Neil's <laughs> ready to deliver. That yes, I have. Ah, do the whole song. <laughs> Go for it. My musical theater <laughs> moment. For more information about programs offered by Will You, Mentoring with Angelique, and to watch video success stories from clients, explore willyougrow.com. If you or your company are interested in inspiring our mutual audience by sponsoring this or another of our programs, let's talk about it. Boost viewer confidence and trust in your company. Call 1-833-WILL-YOU, then press extension number 6. Make sure to click the subscribe button to get reminders before upcoming shows. Good job, guys. Good job, guys. Good show, good show.